making a Stuart model steam plant part 13. Some modifications are needed on this Stuart S50 steam engine including a bit of filing and fitting a silicone o-ring to the piston. After a final tweak of the valve timing the performance is transformed. Using some Brasso wadding I'm trying to remove this corrosion from the steam chest but it's not really working. So instead I used a piece of scotch Bright, and this removed most of it. After the scotch Bright, it was back to the Brasso wadding to finish the job. And now as you can see most of the corrosion has gone. Whoever threaded the centre part of the steam chest used too small a tapping size. As you can clearly see there's a bit of distortion in the centre of the steam chest and this was caused by the tap pushing the metal outwards. Gunmetal is a very soft material and as this is a very old S50 it's made from gunmetal. On later S50 models up to present day these parts are made from cast iron. The spaces between the crosshead guides and the bed are too small and underneath every one of the spaces is a small washer. I showed this in a previous episode and there's nothing wrong with doing that but it's only any good as a temporary measure. No sooner had I removed the crosshead guides I put one back in place but without the washers and yes it is slightly tight not much but tight enough. Once I tightened the two 7BA bolts that hold the crosshead guides to the bed it became very tight. I'll leave that job for the moment and move on to removing the piston. Here it is with a nice slot in the end of it for a screwdriver. I slackened off the nut on the piston rod where the thread goes into the crosshead and just unscrewed the piston. And here's a close up of the job. Nothing difficult here, it's obviously common sense to remove the lock nut to allow me to withdraw the piston rod. I can see from this clip that the cylinder bore isn't bad, it's quite smooth. And after removing the lock nut, the piston was removed from the cylinder. In this clip I'm unscrewing the crank pin because I need to work on the crosshead. Rather than make four new spaces that may still end up being tight, by far the easiest method of correcting this problem is just to file the crosshead. But if you haven't done much filing before, I wouldn't do it this way. You need to practice the filing process to get it right. All you need is a rectangular piece of metal and a micrometer. And once it's filed, check it at both ends. I found a problem with the flywheel. When I tightened the grub screw, it was pushed against the main bearings. Easily rectified once again by the use of a small needle file. This is the Allen key I painted red in a previous episode. It's the only one that I have that seems to fit this type of grub screw fitted into these flywheels. And now everything spins very freely. When I refit the crosshead guides and tighten them up with the 7BA bolts, this is also very free and very firm, just what you need. Please insert a suitable girlfriend joke here. I bought some three quarters of an inch outside diameter silicone o-rings from Blackgate's Engineering and as you can see in this clip it fits perfectly in the cylinder. Over now to my Boxford lathe to machine a groove in the existing piston to take the o-ring. I'm using a very small and thin parting tool for this and the piston is pressed hard up to the chuck jaws for maximum support. The inside diameter of the silicone o-ring I think is 7 sixteenths. So the depth of the groove needs to reflect this. If the depth of the groove is not deep enough, then the o-ring will be pushed outwards, making it a tight fit in the cylinder and you do not want that at all. Once I'd machined the piston and filed the inner edges, I lubricated it thoroughly using steam oil. Always use steam oil on silicone rubber piston rings because certain oils can make them sticky. In this clip, with the blurry camera work, you can see that the piston is now fitted into the cylinder. Here I'm removing the crosshead guides so I can tighten the lock nut once I find the position for the piston in the cylinder. This is how I do it. I screw the piston into the crosshead as far as it will go. And by doing this, the piston hits the cylinder cover. So then I slacken off the lock nut. I turn the piston in the opposite direction to unscrew it slightly. You need to make sure that the piston is an equal distance from each of the cylinder covers at each end of the cylinder. This is not critical, but it will help with the even beats of the engine. 
After fitting the piston back into the cylinder, securing it to the crosshead, it's time to replace the cylinder cover bolts. I use a nut spinner first and then just gently nip them up with a spanner. Obviously being very careful not to over tighten them. Quite a lot of steam engines that I work on have sheared bolts. This is not a car engine. And you need a firm but delicate touch. It's very important. Also, as I mentioned previously, gunmetal is a very soft metal and easily distorted. Time now to test the engine and see if it works. The performance has been transformed, it's quite difficult to stop the engine by gripping the flywheel, it really is much more powerful. However, by having a really good feel at the engine, I can tell that the timing is not 100%. So how do I know this? Well, it's just a case of feel. It's a bit like the way I play music. I play by feel, and it seems to work for me. Here I'm making an absolute minute adjustment to the position of the eccentric. This advances or retards the timing, depending which way you turn it. Early admission of steam is very much what I want, but on a small engine of this type, I don't want it to be too much. I've done this on purpose for the video, this is the wrong setting. One more tweak should do it, and I think it's as near as it's going to ever be. This is how it should run. I've increased the pressure to the engine and I'm using a piece of Scotch Brite to clean up the flywheel. When I let go of it, the engine runs at warp speed. I always need to make sure that nothing falls off. Nothing's broken or bent and everything seems to be fine. I think it's really worth taking the extra time to make a steam engine run properly as it was designed to do. That's about all I can say on the subject for the moment. I'll leave the engine running till the end of the video. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.